Hi, it's my turn to do a floss tube extra. Um, today I'm going to be continuing our adventures in natural dyeing. I'm going to be trying to do some embroidery floss. Um, so I'm just collected my ingredients this morning. I have rose petals. Usually I make jelly out of these, but they're a little bit too far past. So I think they'll hopefully give us some nice pink floss. Um, fig leaves from my dentist's office, but I don't think anybody's gonna mind. Um, Japanese maple, um, and kind of the, the pictures I've seen online show this is a really weak color, so hopefully lots of leaves and we'll get a little bit more vibrancy. Black beans, and dandelions, and my eight-year-old Bert wants me to make sure you all know that he helped pick them. So I've got these all collected. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is make like a really strong tea um, out of them and then um, put some floss that's been treated with a mordant uh, so it ab absorbs the dye better um, in it and we'll see what happens. Oh, and after watching Caroline two weeks ago, I'm definitely gonna be straining everything before I add the floss. Hi, so um, I just wanna emphasize that this is not a how-to video so much as just like, a what I tried video, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys what I'm trying. Uh, so I wanted to show you how I prepared my floss. So this is DMC, and I wrapped it around a book, and I tied it in a couple places. The snuggle is real. Um, so hopefully that'll make it less tangly. And then I'm gonna soak it for 15 minutes in soda ash. So I'm gonna use one gallon of warm water and one cup of soda ash. And that should prepare the fibers to accept dye so that it doesn't all wash out when I wash it at the end. Okay, so this is what it looks like after um, soaking and straining. Uh, we've got the um, ma Japanese maple, dandelion, black bean, fig leaf, and rose petal. I did boil the fig leaf and the dandelion because the color was just super, super pale and I didn't think it was going to go. So I gave those a quick boil, like 15 minutes. And now I'm ready to put my threads in. Dandelion, fig leaf, black bean. Ooh, that's like disappeared. Japanese maple and rose. And then I thought that we could try doing a couple like that, just see what happens. So we'll go between the green and yellow. I think it's gonna be green and yellow, who knows? Ooh, oh, look, my look gosh. at that. Yeah. Oh, Caroline's here. <laughs> Every, Caroline's my neighbor, <laughs> cause everything's awesome. And so Caroline's here. Is, and now you all know. Okay, so I'm gonna give them like an hour and then see how they're looking. Okay, so it's been an hour. And I've seen some really kind of interesting things happen. Most notably, this used to be like a really bright red color and it's just not showing up anymore. And also it's green. Hmm. Um, that was the Japanese maple. The rose has also come out green, actually a really beautiful green. Um, I might go ahead and pull this one. I'm not sure that I want it to get much darker than that. The fig leaf is a beautiful yellow. And the dandelion is a really good, beautiful gold. And the black bean's super dark. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the dandelion and the black bean. 
and the rose petal. Um, but give the fig leaf and the Japanese maple one more hour. Okay, so I ended up taking everything out after one hour because I got too excited. Um, and let me show you what they look like. So this is the black bean. It's this really beautiful soft gray blue. And there was actually kind of variegation within the dye pot too. You can see this darker one and the lighter one. Um, that one is my favorite by far. Uh, the fig leaf came out yellow, but it's like a really beautiful soft yellow. The rose came out kind of like a very light minty green. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up. Um, I think this one would have probably benefited from being in the dye like overnight. And when I do this next time, I think I'm gonna give that one, give that one a longer sit. Um, same thing with the dandelion. The dandelion came out really beautiful, bright yellow, and it washed right out. So it's still a very, very pretty color, but it's a very pale color. And I think that would have been a good overnighter. And then lastly, the Japanese maple. So this was a really kind of interesting dye because sometimes when I would look at it, it would look purple and sometimes it would look green. It did eventually come out green. It's a very soft color and it's very, very pretty. Um, this one is like, if I can say like desaturated olive, um, if you can picture that, it's gorgeous. And it's probably my second favorite out of the group. I'll hold them all up at once. You'll be able to see a little bit better maybe. Next time, I think longer dye baths. And I think I'm gonna try finding some rusty nails to put in because I've heard that can really change up some of the colors. I was really surprised at how the two really red dyes, the Japanese maple and the, um, the roses produced a really pretty vivid green. It was kind of interesting because the liquid never looked green, it always looked red. Um, but I hear that adding some um, iron oxide can really change up how dye behaves. So that's what I'll try for next time. Thanks for joining me and I'm excited to do it again. Okay, bye.